Hello, I'm Reggie Young, and in this episode, I'm going to be talking about how to master productivity using time boxing and a good journaling and planning system. Now, uh, I've actually taken notes on this episode in the planner that I'm selling called the Productivity Planner and Journal. Um, so let's just get right into it. The first thing I want to bring to mind is the concept of time boxing. Now, time boxing, there, I think there was a study done by Harvard Business Review that Time boxing has shown to be, or at least the data shows that a lot of successful people use time boxing to plan out their day and be productive. And what time boxing is at its most fundamental core is just boxing out time throughout your day. So if it's at 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., you're doing this. At 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., you're meeting with the boss. From 11 to 12, you're going to lunch, right? Whatever that looks like for you, as long as you can box time out, uh, throughout the day and keep try and keep it as structured as possible and stick to that structure, that seems to be one of the most productive ways uh, to get things done. Now, I think there are some serious limiting factors uh, with that system, and I think it's built more for people that are working a nine to five that clock in at eight o'clock in the day, eight o'clock in the morning and you know leave at four or five pm whenever that is for you um, and that are more structured and don't have as much freedom and maybe aren't working on six or seven different things or trying to push different aspects of their life forward. Um, but first, what I'll do is I'll talk about how most people time box, and then afterwards I'll talk about a system that I've come up with that I think is much more flexible. So with time boxing, what a lot of people will do first is what we call a brain dump. So the first thing a brain dump includes is just having a sheet of paper and just dumping out all your ideas and, and what you're on what is going on in your head. And it really just helps to provide clarity and just get things down on paper. So it's hey, all the things you're thinking about in no specific order. You're just putting them on a sheet of paper. After you're done looking at that sheet of all the things you have to do, you start to circle or identify probably the top three things that are the most important and uh, in, in, in what you're trying to do. And then based off of that brain dump, based off of what you know is most important, and then how your day is currently structured, you block off time for each portion of the day. Now, again, this is very, very powerful for most people. Um, but I think it's also severely limiting, which is why a lot of people don't do it and why people may adopt it for a short period of time, but also end up failing at it or why it also has its limitations more specifically in people who are doing, uh, who are just trying to stay in their nine to five. It works very well for that, but I think outside of that, the system really starts to fall apart. Uh, and I'll, I'll start saying why. Let's say, for example, you have a meeting with a boss at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock and the boss doesn't show up or somebody cancels. Um, well, now the boss says, okay, I want to meet at two, from two o'clock to three o'clock, but then now your whole schedule is messed up, right? So well, as soon as there's any kind of change to your time boxing, the rest of those boxes just basically fall apart because your four o'clock becomes your six o'clock, your eight o'clock no longer exists, but you probably have to do your eight o'clock. So everything starts to really fall apart. Um, it does have its benefits, but I find in practicality, when you're really trying to drive real change forward, it doesn't allow for enough flexibility. So what I've come up with instead is a process that I call flexible time boxing. Now, flexible time boxing is a slightly different system. Instead of just putting things based off of time, what you want to do is put things based off of priority and time. Now, I have a course that I'll plug at the end of this uh, episode that will really dive into uh, how to use this, what I call flexible time boxing uh, system in a, in a really powerful way. Um, but I want to really focus on now is what other planners and systems fail at. Most planners and systems are using some type of version of a time boxing, right? It's like, here's what I'm going to do at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 p.m. But the reality is some of us work different schedules. Some of us work, may work at, at night and the the pre-filled out slot of, of 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. just doesn't apply. Uh, we may work during the day, but we may realize, hey, the goals that I actually want to push forward in my life don't start for me until 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. or they, they may start before work. So that means I have to rise up and grind early in the day and then later in the evening. So how do I structure my day based off of that? How do I have enough space in a journal to actually do a true brain dump and then prioritize stuff and then time box it? Um, and it becomes really complicated very quickly. So what I find is some people will try to move to an, an electronic type of productivity system, which has its, its benefits, 
Uh, but I also find it severely limiting because you can't really manifest things that you also don't write down. I think there's a lot of uh, power in writing things down and having one system that you carry around with you everywhere. Um, and that's part of the reason why I came up with this productivity planner uh, is because as I went through the last seven plus years of journaling and trying to create a productivity system, I found a lot of journals that I used just weren't structured and weren't flexible enough for what I needed um, and didn't allow me to to accomplish my goals in a really balanced way. So if we look at a lot of other journaling systems out there, a lot of them will be so structured um, that I, they don't leave space for other things that are important in our life uh, to, to move forward. So outside of just being able to do a, a brain dump to prioritize things and then to box them based off of time, that in itself takes up a significant amount of paper in a journal, right? So let's say that you do have a journal that does allow that system. That's really great. The problem is that it fails at other aspects that come to productivity. When we think about productivity and we think about um, how we want to create and manifest things moving forward, we would probably all agree that we want to do it in a way that makes us feel good and feel balanced. And I find that a lot of productivity planners miss the, the complete other aspect of productivity, which is how we feel uh, and the energy and the vibration that we put ourselves in as we move throughout the day. Um, the habits that we're building uh, the, the level of reflection that's required to go into what we're doing every day so that we can adjust uh, the type of actions that we're, we're taking or adjust our mindset and our mood uh, to make sure that we are operating in a really balanced way. So the one thing I want to kind of mention here is regardless of whatever system you take on, whether it's like, you know, rigid time boxing, you could say, or my process of flexible time boxing is whatever system you're doing, you have to have gratitude. And whatever you're doing. And the reason for that is not to create some kind of level of uh, false or toxic positivity, but it's because operating from a place of gratitude, operating from a place of joy, it changes how you work. Just think about how somebody would work if they're pissed off, angry, and hungry versus how somebody would eat, would work if they were probably had, if they weren't hungry, if they were happy and overall joyful, the type of work they would do would be completely different. So one, we have to raise our our vibration and be grateful before we even really step into what we want to do every day. So you want to have a space in your system every single day where you come through and think about and probably write down with words, things that you are grateful for. Once you do that, you want to one, also write down your goals every single day. And you know, you're coming from the person who hate writing things down, who doesn't like, who didn't really like carrying things around, didn't like carrying a paper and pen. I really like doing things on the cloud almost all the time, but I make an exception um, because I found that that success for me made all the difference by writing things down in a planner. So if I can carry one book, one little planner um, that isn't, you know, 50 pounds or uh, and it has enough space to write things down and get things done, uh, I'm willing to write it down there because I find for me, I'm able to create a true productivity system that's flexible enough for my day still has enough structure for what I'm trying to do. Um, and regardless of how the projects change, whatever I'm working on, whether it's things I'm working on for my own self-development um, or the projects I'm working on for my business and my clients, I find that this system provides enough flexibility. Additionally, when I have the space to do a, a gratitude reflection, when I have the space to do a self-reflection, those types of things can make all the difference. Uh, and additionally, with that goal setting, right? It's important to to have our goals, but to look at them every single day and actually write them down, I think is really, really powerful and can't, uh, can't be understated or overstated enough. And the reason for that is because when you write your goals on every day, one, it sounds really basic, but again, it's that, it's that small step of manifestation. But as you write it down every day, it helps bring you back to what you had set out. If you don't write your goals down every day, you'd be surprised how naturally we get into we get caught up in the minutia of the email, the, the, the small, fine tasks of what we're doing. Other pressures may enter our life, or we may think like, yeah, I'm working towards that goal. But it really starts to really focus your mind every single day when you look back at your goals and you spend literally like 15 to 20 seconds to short, short form write out your goals, right? 20K a month is what I want to make this month, or I want to build this habit, or I want to do this, this, this. So writing down your goals every single day it could, doesn't have to be a huge journal of like crazy, you know, creativity, powerful manifestation with a two paragraph goal. That's not what I'm talking about. It's just short form sentences, like half sentences, like this much I want to make per month. I want to have this impact. I want to have uh, change this uh, habit or focus on this part of, of, of my life for the next week, the next month, whatever it is, right? 
we come, when we start our day with gratitude and then we step into our goals, we refocus our goals every single day, and then we move into a brain dump, and then we move into top priorities, and then we structure our day based off of flexible time boxing and allowing enough rigidity to allow our 10 p.m. to just completely, you know, ruin our day or say, let's say we get tired and we, we understand like, hey, we don't want to work for the rest of the day. How do you allow the rest of your system to move fluid around what's actually happening in your life? And that's what I challenge you to, to implement in your life right now, um, whatever, however that looks best for you. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about here is routines. And it's something that we forget a lot about. Of course, we've heard of a lot. People have heard about habit trackers and morning and nighttime routines, and they definitely have their benefit. Uh, but the one thing I want to leave you with is your routines help maintain momentum from your day to day. So we have right our time box and we have our checklist, we have whatever process we use to get things done now. But if we don't overlay that sandwich with the momentum of a morning and the evening routine uh, or some kind of consistent routine to bring you from, from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, you start to lose fluidity and momentum. So I think it's very important to instill some type of routine. You don't have to be religious about it. You don't have to have this two-hour morning routine or this two-hour wind-down routine, but try and create some kind of ritual, some kind of habit, some kind of unstoppable momentum where it becomes second nature to you that helps you, one, self-reflect, two, raise your vibration, three, analyze uh, the mistakes you made in the day, celebrate the wins, uh, and plan for the future, right? And so definitely implement those things in your life. It can start as easy as just pulling out a, a notepad on your phone saying morning routine, evening routine, and just kind of making it up as you go along and, and editing it uh, based off of your performance and how you feel throughout the day. Um, and a big thing as it relates to routines, uh, checklists, and all this type of stuff is don't make a religion out of it. It's okay to, to, to be disciplined. I would say for most people, kind of make it a religion to start out because most people actually lack discipline more than they lack um, the, the severe obedience to, to a system. I've, I've definitely come, I think both ways where, where I had absolutely no system at all as, as a younger, young adult, I didn't really care about anything. So I was so lazy. I got nothing done. And then I got to the point where I, I, I took every single course I could possibly find on, on productivity, uh, bought a ton of journals. And for the last seven years, trying to find a system that works for me. And I felt like was flexible enough for other people. And then at one point, I even made my routine super long, my journaling system super in-depth, and it was very beneficial. But then I, I created such a religion and such obedience to it that I became a slave to my routine. And then the day, the moment I, I didn't do it or something really sideswiped me in my life, it's, it's like my, my productivity came down like significantly because I had built up myself on top of my routine. And that's not what we want to be doing when, when it comes to creating a productivity system, a productivity system does not function like a robot because we're not robots. We're human beings with emotions, with feelings. Life happens to us. It's, it's our ability to stay, to just create, I think, positive momentum moving forward, to be self-reflective and to kind of always just be kind of like moving forward and growing and trying to achieve our goals regardless of how that changes. My morning routine has changed significantly over time and it changed based, how, based off the projects I'm going after, uh, how I feel. And, uh, you know, where I'm at in my personal life. So don't feel like if you miss your routine or, or you're not doing it or you fail to, to be disciplined about it, don't, don't take it so hard on yourself. Just try and create some kind of a structure and follow it. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is, a, is a, what I call a, maybe like a deeper self-reflection. A lot of journals and planners out there, uh, their self-reflection pages are either so big it takes up the whole journal, which, is, which can be very, very powerful. But the downside to that is it leaves no room for anything else. It leaves no room for time boxing, no room for the brain dump, no room to, for writing down goals. Uh, all these different things can really, it's really hard. I find it's really hard to put all that into one book that's affordable, um, that allows you to, to really hit all different aspects in a powerful way. So whatever system you're using for self-reflection, make sure that it's actually causing deep enough self-reflection to create powerful enough change or visibility in what you're doing. So. Um, there are different journals that their self-reflection goes as small as rate your day from one to five. What can I do better? And it's one line. That's to me, that's not self-reflection. Um, that's like surface level, you know, tip of the iceberg stuff. You want to find what I call like the real root cause of what is causing you to either 
do really well or do really bad. So in my journal, I have dedicated self-reflection pages. Um, but what, we, what you want to do is called a root cause analysis. And there are different ways to do a root cause analysis. I'll, again, I cover this in depth in my course. Uh, but what you want to do is start, have a starting point. For me, the starting points could be a goal, an emotion, uh, a, 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 like a feeling, an event, um, or a person. So I could have walked across a person. That person could have made me feel t- a certain type of way. I could have felt a certain type of way. And then based off of that emotion, so let's say, for example, um, somebody closed the door on me when I was trying to leave Starbucks the other day, and that made me angry for some reason. So, so that I could say like that person would be my starting point, and I could then go down this process of a root cause analysis. And I have a very unique way of doing it. It comes from things I've learned in the military, doing root cause analysis uh, on, on mission planning, but then also weaving in different aspects of the emotional body. Uh, and, and real deep reflection outside of just what's happening in the, in the outside, what's happening inside is just important, if not more important than what's happening outside. So it's a reflection of asking yourself, hey, what's the impact of how I felt? Um, why did I feel this way? Uh, how does this impact my goals? How does this impact the person that, w- that I came across? How does it impact other people in my life? Right? So you have to ask, what's the impact uh, to your goals, yourself, and the other person or people in your life? Then after that, I asked myself, uh, what, what did I feel? Uh, like, how did I actually feel? I try and sit with that feeling and let it kind of dissipate throughout my body. Because if the moment we push down our feelings is the more coping that we do, and it starts to pop up in other areas of our life, which we definitely don't want. So uh, I, I do a little bit of a, of a feeling exercise. Then after that, I ask myself, okay, what's the root cause? And the easiest way to ask yourself what the root cause is, is just to keep asking yourself why. You know, why did I feel this way? Or why did this person do this? Because, you know, maybe I was rushing and I wasn't paying attention. Or why else did I feel this way? Because um, I was super hungry or I, um, I was really angry or um, I never, um, I, I was jealous of the other, how, how the other person looked. Um, and so that reflected in me and brought out anger where it normally wouldn't have. So what does that mean about me? Well, why do I feel this way? I feel this way because I, I have this wounding that I never actually actually truly dealt with, okay, maybe this is, this could be the root cause, right? There could be multiple reasons as to why something happens. Sometimes there's rarely ever one. It's usually a mix of things, but that's where you start to identify things that, um, that are impacting you in your life. So doing that root cause analysis, I think is, is very important. Identifying what the change can be, verbalizing that change and then internalizing it, whether it's a, a slight meditation, whether it's you saying it out loud, whether it's you writing it in a sentence um, is a way of kind of encapsulating and, and doing a real root cause analysis and, and, this is a, and a deeper reflection than what could I have done better this week, right? These, these types of reflections are super powerful and they're not only meant for things that hurt you in your life. They're also things that provide joy and value in your life. So instead of it just being an, a negative uh, experience, it could be a positive one, right? Oh, I got a raise today. How did this make me feel, right? And that you can start from there. Um, so don't, don't just limit yourself. Don't just focus on the negative. You also want to focus on the positive as well. Um, okay, now I kind of want to start to, uh, slowly wrap up, uh, this overall system, uh, an idea I have for, you know, trying to master productivity. We, we've all heard before that we need to take our, our big vision and break it down into goals or like my, goals into milestones, right? Uh, that's the, the general process and, and, and it works really, really well. So, uh, what I would say is, you know, spend a few minutes, think about what, what do you want in the future and don't. Don't limit yourself. Like if you want to go to Mars, like legitimately may, maybe plan to go to Mars. I would say legitimately don't limit yourself because most of us limit ourselves. We say, hey, I, I want to make an extra $500 a month or, you know, what about 10,000? What about a thousand? You know, or I want to, I want to uh, have this fitness goal. Like a lot of us really just don't believe in ourselves and we don't believe we can create uh, these pretty amazing things. So uh, if it's your first time, just reach further than you normally would. You don't have to reach for the stars, but don't be afraid to reach this for the stars. Pretend, what do you want your 10-year vision to be like? Think about where you want to be, the income you want to have, the impact you want to have, how you want to feel, what kind of people you want to be surrounded by, where that place is, um, all these different things. Think about that 10-year vision and then just break that down to a five-year goal to a three-year goal. So if you need to have, if you want 10 million in 10 years, well, then that means that five years, maybe you want 5 million. What is that? In three years, does that mean you want a house? Does that mean you want a certain asset uh, portfolio? Uh, What does that look like? So try and reverse engineer it all the way back down to eventually get to what I call like three-month goals. And with that three-month goals, you can then 
break those goals down into milestones. Those milestones, right? They all just, you're just continually breaking things down, reverse engineering them into, okay, so that means in the three months, I need to make an additional $3,000 a month in income. What does that look like? Okay, it looks like identifying an online business model. It looks like taking the course. It looks like ordering the first product. It looks like scheduling a one-on-one -on -one call. It looks like getting samples, right? That's how you create these milestones that lead up to your goals that then lead up to your three-year vision or your three-year goals, your five-year goals, and your 10-year vision. And it doesn't mean that you can't change it as, as life comes your way, but having this full picture drawn out and creating this foundation for manifestation is super, super important. Um, so definitely don't discount creating vision goals, breaking them down to milestones, and then using those as the goals that you write down every single day. Um, last but not least, what I'll do is everything I mentioned before is nothing new. It's things that have all been mentioned by other people and different aspects of uh, self-improvement and journaling. Uh, journaling saved my life. It legitimately saved my life in a time where I felt extremely depressed. I was uh, going through a really tough time in my life. And I eventually decided like, hey, it wasn't the business model that I, that I was in. It wasn't me failing at product selection or, or doing whatever. I was failing at all those things because I, I, I was not structuring my day in a powerful way. And when I did, I wasn't balancing the other aspect of it, which is the internal battle um, of, of gratitude and things like that. So what I've done is I've tried to create legitimately a planner, a system that anybody can use and give it away for close to nothing. So this is my productivity planner and journal. Uh, what I'll do is I'll link to it uh, in the description down below in the show notes. But what this is, is I've tried to look at different journals. I've done a lot of research online. Um, a lot of journals, they kind of fail where... Uh, Let's say you, you buy a, a two-month journal or a three-month journal, and it has the months already written in or the week written in or the way they structure the pages. They're, they're made in such a way where if you miss a day or you miss a week or you forget a month or you haven't built the habit enough, when you try and pick that habit back up, you have to fast forward like halfway through the book because you already burned that last month um, or those days are hard written in or it's previous year or, or something like that. So you really can't start and stop as life gets in the way. So I've structured my journal that in a way in which it's undated and also, also formatted in a way so that you, you truly can start and stop as life gets the way. Of course, we want to build that, that momentum, that, that daily habit, uh, but it is structured in a very powerful way so you're not wasting pages and space. Uh, it's also structured in a way that anyone, regardless of what they're doing, can pick up the journal and intuitively know how to use it. Um, of course... I, Inside, if you decide to become a Vault member, I give a full in-depth course that shows you how to break down and leverage every single one of these pages and take it literally 10x like to the next level. Um, but you don't have to go through this whole like five-hour, three-hour course or however long it is and do all this like one-hour prep to leverage this in a powerful way. You literally could use the daily page, just one side, and you could spend a minute a day minimum. And I guarantee you, if you did a minimum one minute per day using my journal, you'd be a hell of a lot further ahead uh, than using probably the current system that isn't working for you. So um, here I have daily pages, uh, goal setting pages, vision pages, habit trackers, monthly pages, daily you know routine pages. I have a full notebook in the back that actually has space for you to write. Um, so it's a very, very powerful system. And um, the, the one big thing I want to mention is that, of course, you can use it at any skill level. You can start and stop at any time that you want, but I'm not making any money on it, to be honest. I, I really not. So uh, I recommend getting the hardcover version. That there's a soft cover and a hardcover version. This is the hardcover version. You can like write your name or like Q1 on the back, however you want to do it. Um, I love the hardcover version. It's just a lot easier to write on. Uh, most journals go, most serious journals that you can use only last two to three months. This is meant to last four months with everyday use. You get a full page that you can use every month. A, a lot of them that go beyond that, you literally have like one page for the whole month. You, you, you can't do anything. Next thing you know, you're carrying three books around. You're not even using the thing. So this is four months, every single day use, super powerful. It still has a full notebook in the back with enough space to, to, to do what you need. And um, I make about 20 cents in profit. Uh, <laughs> per book that that's uh, being sold. So it's definitely not worth the time uh, that it, it's taking me to create this, the updates that I pro continue to provide to this and the course. Um, but if you are interested in purchasing it, I really think it could be the unlock for 
you provide you creating next level success in your life, but doing it in a really powerful and balanced way, which is super important. And you only get that with that self reflection. Um, again, if you decide to be a vault member, um, what you do, if, if you are a vault member, you get a copy of this journal for free. Uh, so that's one of the benefits of being a vault member. If you don't want to be a vault member, don't worry about it. If you're still interested, you can use a link down below, pick it up on Amazon. I get 20 cents in profit. Hooray. <laughs> you know, after taxes, it's like 10 cents. Um, but, uh, I, I really want to give this system away because this is a system I created that has helped me. And I really think it can help you or someone that maybe, you know, in your life. Um, and then, yeah, with that, if you do de decide to become a vault member, again, you get that course, but inside that course, you have, uh, access to more resources. You really get to learn how to leverage, uh, things in the, in this journal and the feedback so far has been, it's a night and day difference being able to use the journal after taking the course versus before taking the course. And in the course, I also have access to uh, digital files, printable versions, more prompts. Um, I really deep dive how to do the self-reflection, different ways to do self-reflection because there's so many different ways to do it. Um, and this journaling system and book allows you to do basically almost all of them any which way you want. So it's truly flexible. Um, so that's it for this uh, episode. Thank you so much for, for watching, for taking the time to listen. And thank you for, for the support. Best of luck and take care.